Uh, thank you for that introduction and, and thank you very much uh, for having me to speak and for organising this whole event. I can tell from talking to people outside what a fantastic event it was. And I've only got one complaint really and that's being forced to speak after the brilliant youngsters at OFOC. Um, I'd much rather preferred, with all due respect, to go on after the lawyers. Uh, <laughs> But you, you can't have everything. Um, so I thought I'd introdu introduce myself. Um, uh, I'm James McGrory. I'm the Executive Director of Open Britain. Uh, worked for the Liberal Democrats for 10 years, uh, five years as Nick Clegg's spokesman, then went to work uh, for the Remain campaign. So you can tell I've got a very strong record of picking winners. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it's because we felt so strongly that um, myself and all the team at, at Open Britain have spent the last 18 months campaigning tirelessly about the benefits of the single market and the custom union. We've got uh, over 50 local groups all around, all around the country, many in leave areas. Uh, we've held hundreds and hundreds of, of street stalls. You'll have seen one outside in the foyer earlier. Our supporters have written hundreds of letters, hundreds of thousands of letters, and delivered hundreds of thousands of leaflets to demand that the government changes from its hard and destructive Brexit course and seeks instead to protect jobs, living standards and public services like our NHS. But we've also long campaigned for people to be allowed to keep an open mind about Brexit, as new facts continue to emerge that couldn't have been known at the time of the referendum. The attempt from Brextremists to shut down debate has been one of the least appealing things I've seen in this country for a long time. Democracy did not start and end in June 2016. We do not have to go along with the Brexit that will damage our prosperity just because Boris Johnson, Michael Gove and the right-wing press say we have to. As it becomes clear that the Brexit being delivered is not the one that was promised, everybody has the basic democratic right to question whether it's really the best thing for our country. That's a real democracy. We've also been campaigning hard to make sure the rights of EU citizens living in the, e living in the UK and UK citizens living in the EU are fully protected. To not do so would not only be yet another broken Brexit promise, but it would be a stain on our nation's very character. The Britain I love is not one who people who've come here to work hard, pay their taxes and make a massive contribution to our society, our culture and our country are suddenly told that the rules have changed. These are not pawns in a political game. You are our family members, our friends, our colleagues and our loved ones. And this is your home as much as it is mine or anybody else's. So Open Britain's position against a hard and destructive Brexit has allowed us to assemble a large group of supporters in Parliament from across the political spectrum. And from what I've seen, the appetite for cross-party working is larger than it has been at any point of my 15 years working in politics. And I think that's a good thing. Because both, while we don't have to accept the Brexit that's presented to us, neither do our elected representatives in Parliament. And when they do work together, the results can be impressive. Just look at the uh, Amendment 7 campaign that was run uh, before uh, Christmas last year and resulted in us actually winning a vote in Parliament. It certainly gave me heart, and I hope it gave all campaigners on our side of the argument heart, because it gives us two things. Firstly, it shows the government does not have an inbuilt majority for Brexit. If they can be beaten once, they can be beaten again. And secondly, I think it gives us a legislative paint, a legislative canvas to paint on later this year. It was also, I think, the first time, if we're honest with ourselves as a movement, that our side of the argument was all completely pulling in the same direction. And it worked. MPs from all parties have told me how much of an impact that campaign groups like Open Britain and the European Movement and Britain for Europe and many others, the impact that our work had. They say we would not have won that vote unless hundreds of our supporters had gone to see their MP in their surgery, unless thousands of them had written to their MP demanding that they vote yes to Amendment 7. What it showed me most was that our movement is strongest when we work together. There are always going to be legitimate differences of opinion about campaign language, about strategy and about tactics. That is politics. And let me tell you, you get that inside political parties themselves, let alone in a movement as diverse, as vibrant and as grassroots-led as ours is. And the grassroots bottom-up approach that we take at Open Britain and I know is shared by other campaigning groups is a strength, not a weakness. We've got lots of different organisations. You've heard from lots of them over the course of the day and lots of different brilliant people doing brilliant work. But we're all doing good work, and I've no doubt that we're all on the right side of history. What I do accept, though, is that the campaigns can get better at working together. 
And on that note, I think we took a big step forward last week when six of the pro-European campaigns, Open Britain, European Movement, Britain for Europe, Scientists for EU, Healthier In, and in fact, all moved in together in a suite of offices just down the road at Millbank Tower. And in, in under a week, I can see how this is going to make the sharing of intelligence, ideas and resources much more easy. Simply, we're together, we're, we're stronger when we work together. And we'll need to be. The bigger battles are to come. We need to win over both parliamentary and public opinion and do so in a very short space of time. And the two are intrinsically interlinked. Many MPs will only feel emboldened to reject a Brexit deal and suggest it be put to the people to decide if they feel that public opinion is demanding it. But public opinion also needs to be led and parliamentarians are in a unique position to do so. And I think it's great that we're seeing now such strong leadership from the next generation of MPs. People like Chucker Amuna, Anna Subri, Joe Swinson and Caroline Lucas, most of whom I think you've heard speak today. Our movement's come a long way, but there's still a very long journey ahead. In less than a year, we've got to do the following things. Win round public opinion, change the front, front bench position of the Labour Party and en encourage enough Conservative rebels to join us. That's everything in my intro for the next six months. Um, it's a large task, but by no means an unachievable one. I think more and more of the public and parliamentarians are coming round to the idea of a people's vote on the Brexit deal. I picked that up both on the doorstep and in the polling. The door is ajar. Brexit is not inevitable. Brexit is not a done deal, but it's going to make a huge effort from everybody in this room and everybody campaigning on this issue to get a public vote on the Brexit deal. But I can only speak for myself and all of the team at Open Britain when I say we're very much up for that fight and I know our hundreds of thousands of supporters are. The future of our country is at stake. Brexit will restrict the opportunities my children and grandchildren have in their lives. This is too important, in my view, to, let, to be left to the politicians to decide. The people should, but only a lot of work inside and outside of Parliament will get us that opportunity. Thank you very much.